we're going to be going back in time and creating some retro looking CGI using modern free open source tools. So create a new project in Blender. And we're just going to split the view here so that we can get our shader editor open. Press N to collapse the side panel and we're going to select our main object. Now let's just go ahead and go into rendered view. Now the first step to recreating super retro CGI is by recreating the environment. Now with super retro CGI, they didn't have HDRI. So we can just go ahead and remove the background entirely. And we're gonna add in a point light because this is the kind of lighting that maybe they were using at first. We'll turn off our overlays and press T to collapse our tools panel on the side and just increase the brightness of our light till it's, you know, brighter. Sometimes my genius is, it's almost frightening. We'll also create a plane and scale that up a bit. We'll move up our cube and this is looking pretty good. Now, a couple of other things that I'm noticing that we're gonna have to change to make this seem a little bit more accurate for what we're trying to recreate is we need to take the size of our light down to zero because we want these nice, super, super sharp looking shadows. It's looking pretty spiffy. But the other thing that I wanna do is I wanna bring in a very retro sort of CG object. So we're gonna go under edit and preferences and we're gonna go under the add-ons tab and make sure that the extra objects add-on is enabled. This comes with Blender, so you don't need to install anything. We're just gonna hit Shift A, Mesh, Extras, Teapot Plus. Now we can take the resolution of the teapot down to two and just, you know, bring it up a little bit so it sits on top of the cube, scale it down a bit. Now we've got a very classic sort of CG scene. If we select our teapot and press period or delete on the number pad on our keyboard, we can center ourselves to this teapot. Now I want to shade this smooth, so I'll right click and hit shade smooth, and now we're getting we're getting all this nice smoothing going on here. I'll go ahead and move my points to my lights collection because I set it up all fancy like that. Let's select our teapot and create a new material, and we'll just call this retro shader. And then we will apply this material to our other objects as well. Now we can get to work. Now I wanna stop for a moment to thank today's sponsor, which is actually me. If you saw my last video, you probably know that there's something wrong with this render, and that this light is perfectly even and flat, and it creates a really unrealistic look because lights in the real world aren't these completely flat squares. But thanks to the latest and greatest from Fraser FX, we have this awesome brand new light textures pack, which is something I've been wanting to release for a very long time, and I finally got to it, so here it is. This pack comes with like 44 different textures, and I'm really excited about it because they're actually split into two very useful different categories. The first is light textures. This is to add realism to the reflections of the objects in your 3D scenes. These contain different images taken of like reflectors and different actual light sources like soft boxes with the covers on and with the covers off, which will give you some super useful variety for your 3D scenes. The second category, which is actually something that I'm super stoked about, is gobos. There are 22 awesome gobo textures that include everything from different like caustic textures to just cool fascinating light patterns, like, like for cool sci-fi or industrial type scenes. And I found them super useful in my own projects and I can't wait to share them with you in the future. So you can go over to FraserEffects.com right now or check out the link in the description to pick up this pack of light textures for yourself today. Now the thing with the actual material surface of our shader itself is that we don't want it to be physically accurate like the principal BSDF is. So we're going to delete this and we're just going to add in a diffuse shader. Plug this into our surface and now we've got, I mean we've got a, you know, good looking, it's, I mean it's diffuse, you know, what am I going to say? Then we'll add in an add shader because we want to have some glossy reflection and we'll add in a glossy BSDF. Now this isn't accurate to how materials behave in the real world, but we're not looking for accuracy. We're looking for that sweet, sweet retro looking stylism. We'll bring the roughness down to like 0.2 or 0.3, you know, whatever it is that you prefer. So we get like that nice sort of evenly hot, like sort of blurry hot spot. And that's the other advantage of having all of our point lights at zero is that all of the reflections are exactly the same size. We can move this around and maybe change the color a bit. Yeah, sure, why not? Now the first thing that we need to do is make sure that we're not getting any of this indirect lighting. We don't want any objects to appear in reflections and we don't want to get bounce lighting. So we're gonna go ahead and take this add shader and we're gonna plug it into a mix shader. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this, we're gonna take the output from the add shader and put it into the second input of the mix shader. And now we can see that we can mix this between black and on. Now, if we turn it off, then we don't have any of the indirect lighting. So our problem is solved, but we still wanna be able to see our object. So we will add in a light path node and plug the camera ray output into the factor of the mix shader. Now we're getting this very nice looking like retro CG. I mean, look at it, look, look at it. It looks, so, it looks so nice and clean, but there's still a couple of features that we wanna be able to add to sort of complete the look. One of the big things that I wanna be able to do is I wanna be able to 
package all of this into one single node that I can copy to different materials. So instead of having all of these sprawled out, I just have one nice little compact node. So we're gonna just click and drag over everything and press Control G. And this stands for group. So now we have a group, we're inside of this group. So we have a group input node and a group output node. If we press tab, we can tab in and out of this group as long as we have this node selected. Now we can see that our entire shader is grouped into one, one handy dandy little node here. So if we open this up, we want to expose a couple of different settings. So I wanna just drag from this group input, the diffuse color and the glossy color. Now we have these two settings on our node, so we can see that we can change the color. What this means is that now we can duplicate our retro shader and now just the teapot, we can make whatever color we want. But the cool thing is that we can still modify all of them if we come into the shader here. Like we can turn off the diffuse or we can disconnect the glossy or whatever. And it's gonna update on all of them because we're updating the inside of the node. So we'll just rename this to retro shader. And maybe we'll expand this just so, I don't know, just because I feel like it. And I want to rename these inputs because right now we just have a color and a color. And that's not very descriptive. So if we press N to open up this panel, we can go to the group tab and change these input names. So we could change this to diffuse color and specular color. Now, you know, it makes a little bit more sense and we can change the colors of these two things separately. Just because, I mean, why not? Why not have some more control? The next thing that I wanna do is I want to have a specular strength. The way that we're gonna do that is we're actually gonna add in a mix, oops, a, mi oops, a mix RGB node. We wanna make sure that our specular color is in the color two input. For color one, we're just gonna select all of these channels here, the red, green, and blue, and we're just gonna make it zero. We're gonna make it black. Now we can see here that this slider is going to control the amount of specularity on our object. With it all the way at one, we have lots of specularity, and at zero, we have no specularity. We'll just turn off the, the other light for the sake of performance, and this is perfect. So we'll just go ahead and expose this value here. And now we can name this value specular. Maybe we can move it around. We can shift it maybe above the specular color because why not? Now this is a really cool, basic retro looking shader, but we're not quite done with our setup yet because there's still a couple of things we can do to really evoke that sort of classic retro vintage feel to our CGI. So I'm just gonna open up the shader and I want to add in something a little bit interesting here. We're gonna go ahead, we're gonna move this out to the side. And we're just gonna give ourselves some room to play with, a big empty space in the middle here. Now we can add things. We will add an add shader and an emission shader to that add shader. Now you can see that we can add sort of an even color over everything if we want to. But what I want this to be is I want this to be an environment texture. Instead of having a proper environment map, we're gonna do this kind of reflection map thing that you might see in some retro games like Gary's Mod. So if we just add in an image texture, we can hit open, and I'm just gonna find where my environment maps are. Now, I actually happen to have one that's a JPEG called Interesting Trees. Now, the advantage of using JPEGs is that they clip, so instead of having full high dynamic range values, it's just, well, like I said, it's gonna, it's gonna clip. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit Control T with the selected, and it should bring up these two nodes. If not, you need to go to Edit, Preferences, Add-ons, and make sure that Node Wrangler is enabled. That's very important. Now, we can change this value from UV to Reflection. We're gonna see that we're gonna get this cool looking reflection out of our image. Now, I actually realized that we did something wrong here. We don't want this to be an image texture node. We want this to be an environment texture node. So if we just hit Shift S, we can change this from a texture image texture to an environment texture. And now I can see that the mapping is all correct and accurate and stuff. And it looks like we're looking at a reflection of an environment map, even though it's actually just this image mapped onto the geometry. So let's plug this into the emission. If we tab out of our node here and just control shift left click on it, that temporary viewer thing will go away. And now the whole thing, every, everything looks kind of reflective. So what I want to do is I want to create another slider for this emission strength. So we can actually duplicate this group input node. Now the thing is, we could just plug this into the strength, but the problem is that it won't give us a nice slider like we get with our roughness value here or with the mix factor to the RGB node. It's just gonna be this floating value. So what we can actually do is add in a mix RGB node because this has that slider that we want. We, it has this specific sort of interactable value. And if we plug this into there and then reconnect it into the emission node, we can see that it gives us the slider on the outside of the shader. We can set this to something really low, like 0.1. And in fact, we'll actually go into the, we'll actually open up this end panel here, go to the factor and change the default to 0.1 as well. It could even be lower than that by default, like 0.02. 
we'll call this environment strength. Let's see how the 0.01 value looks. I think that's I think that's not too bad. We could change it to something higher if we wanted to. 0.05. Copy it. You know, paste it. Paste in this new default value, and then just paste that value into the other retro shader material. And now everything looks like it has this kind of reflection. Now this is pretty nice. Because for example, we could take the diffuse color and bring it all the way down, and the specular color and bring it all the way up, and we could bring up this like emission strength, and now suddenly our teapot looks metallic. It's really not. It's not actually metallic at all. But it looks metallic because we've created sort of that effect. And that's really what the beauty of this whole this whole way of working is. is we're not really looking for something accurate. We're looking for a fun stylistic representation of the real world that relies on us playing some fun tricks in order to make things work. Now there's one last thing that I want to do to sort of create like a cool, like jagged, almost pixelated looking setup here in the viewport anyway. So if we go over to our render tab, this is actually going to affect the final render. If we go under the film tab and our render tab, the film tab and the render panel of the, whatever this is, and take our pixel filter width and bring it all the way down to zero, you're going to notice we get like these super jagged edges. And it's, it's kind of hard to see here actually. It's not very easy to see at the moment, but if we go down to performance, this viewport pixel size, we can bring this up to say something like 0.4 and it's going to pixelate the image, but you can see we're getting these really jagged edges because we've turned off the anti-aliasing. If this was still at 1.5, our edges would appear blurry, but because it's at 0.01, we get these super jagged edges. Now look at how ultra retro -y our image looks, but you're probably wondering how do you make our final render look pixelated? Well, there's actually a pretty simple way to do that. The first way is just to have a low resolution render. The second way involves us to, to do a fun little trick. So let's just set up a render however you would normally do it. Our image looks almost as ugly as I do. Um, we're going to go into the compositing tab and click use notes. Let's expand this out a bit and open up the viewer so we can see it. I'll just hold down shift and right click and drag across these here so that they combine into one little one little reroute node. It's just a handy little, handy little shortcut. Now in the middle here, we're gonna take a transform node and we want to scale this down to like 0.1. Now we'll duplicate this and scale it up to 10. So that way it essentially cancels out the scale. Now you can see what it's doing. You can see that it's effectively giving us the super like this extra pixely sort of jaggedy look. But we want to take this a step further. If we add in a pixelate node in the middle here, you can see that things get super pixelated. We can actually condense this into one handy little input if we take a math node and a value node. We plug this value, we plug this value into the scale and set up our math node to look a little bit like this. So that way, our value here is just a pixelation slider. We can set this to whatever value we want and you can see that it's going to become pixelated, but this is still a 1920 by 1080 image, which means it's still technically high resolution and it's going to look like this. It's going to look all clean like this instead of blurry when you preview it in other programs. Now there are a couple things to keep in mind as far as how to make this work is you want to take out, you, you don't want to use your normal texturing process. So like this plane here, if we want this to look like grass, what we're going to do is we're going to add in an image texture and I'm literally going to find a photo of grass, a photo that just has grass in it. Like sure, this one, why not? We may even need to edit the UVs in the UV editor, but we just want to get like just, just grass. And it's just a fun way. You know, you plug that into the, diff into the diffuse now. It's just a fun way. Like now we've got like this fun looking grass, but it's not like actually like grass. You know, we take the specular, value we can bring it down almost all the way there you go now you've got like a thing and it looks it's like it's like this weird fakery of grass it's like this weird it's not it's not grass like this is definitely is definitely most certainly not grass but it, it's clearly like meant to be grass so like you kind of like excuse it i guess i don't know it's just very very strange and if you're into that if you're into that kind of like strange sort of surrealist art this is a perfect this is a uh, this is a perfect tool for you this whole like this whole tutorial is just probably like you just hit the jackpot this is it this is everything this is everything you could possibly need now before we completely like leave it here there's still one last little little one last little thing it's like a little nice little touch on top that i want to do now i've got aces installed on here which means that i can't change to standard but you can change your view display to standard or the other thing that you can do is if you change whatever your whatever your display your color management is to raw and then change your gamma to 2.2 or 2.4 it depends on depends on whatever you know whatever it is you're going for 2.4 is probably more uh accepted i guess but now we're gonna get that really those really ugly looking colors like these just absolutely disgusting 
ugly contrasty colors and the blues all gross now and it's just terrible but it, you know it's it's kind of accurate and um honestly it really helps to reinforce the look so just so we're clear this is what our node setup looks like this is here's your here's your look you don't really need another look it's not very complicated adds pretty much everything you need to make it work and we got this cool retro looking effect so now that we've traveled into the past, maybe you want to take a look at a super modern and futuristic way to light your scenes. If that's what you want, you can click on this video right here to see a super crazy and awesome advanced technique for that. You could also, I mean, there are other videos that you could watch on my channel, but I recommend this. This one is, this is the good one. This is the good, this is, this is the sauce. Okay.